Are you interested in becoming an Amazon DSP owner? Well, if the answer is yes, today I will share my tips on the Amazon DSP interview process. I have helped several people ace their Amazon DSP interview with my proven process. There are three phases to acing your interview. I will go through each phase and explain to you in detail what you should know. Okay, so to start off, being an Amazon delivery service partner, a DSP, is more than just a partnership. It's a hands-on entrepreneurial bootcamp. You're running your own delivery business, ensuring those Amazon packages are delivered every day and on time. It's about mastering operational efficiencies and logistics, optimizing routes, and managing inventory. But here's the real deal. Running a delivery business means facing challenges head on, whether it's unpredictable demand or weather disruptions, adaptability and problem solving becomes your best friend. It's like a crash course in entrepreneurship. As I mentioned before, there are three phases that you should know about the Amazon DSP interview. So let's dive right in. Okay, the first phase, phase one involves creating a profile on the Amazon DSP portal and responding to inquiries about your professional background and experiences. I'll put the link down in the descriptions below. You will also be asked to upload a resume in some instances, and in all instances, you will be required to submit a background and or credit check. Get your resume in top notch shape. It might sound like a no-brainer, but trust me, many folks overlook this crucial step. Here's the deal. Amazon is going to scrutinize your resume to see if your experiences sets you up with the skills needed to be a successful DSP. Take a good hard look at your resume. Have you got experience managing people? Have you shown your knack for making tough decisions and leading teams to success? Highlight those skills. Polish up your resume because it's your ticket to showing Amazon you've got what it takes to run a logistics business. Next, you want to reflect on your entrepreneurial journey and jot them down. Take a moment to consider all the endeavors, whether big or small, that have shaped your experiences as an entrepreneur. This isn't just about owning a business. It's about seizing opportunities, driving change, and making things happen either within your company or while assisting a friend in starting their own venture. Think about the initiatives you spearheaded at work, the challenges you face, and the lessons learned along the way. But don't forget to also reflect on those ideas that never quite took off. What held you back? Was it fear, failure, uncertainty, or perhaps a lack of resources? Think about those things and jot them down. What Amazon is doing is they're looking to see if you've learned from your experiences, and whether or not it has shaped you into the type of leader they're looking to onboard into the program. Okay, this one is a big one. Let's talk about Amazon's 16 leadership principles. These are the principles that Amazon live by. If you do not know them, a quick Google search can bring you up to speed. Read them. Don't just breeze through them. Take the time to really understand what each one means, and more importantly, whether you align with them. You might find that you're not a fan of any of these principles, and that's okay. Don't apply. But if you do resonate with them, listen up, because what you'll need to do next is crucial. These principles are the foundation of Amazon's culture and how they operate. So if you're looking to join the team, you'll want to pay close attention. Okay, so number one, write down every principle and make sure you understand the principle. Number two, Think of two experiences you've had that can resonate with each principle. Jot them down. You should be able to give an example or tell a story about each of these experiences and how they tie back to the principle. To give you an example, one of my favorites is bias for action. Amazon's definition for bias for action is speed matters. When making important decisions, do not procrastinate or overanalyze each decision. Taking quick action is just as important when making a decision. The longer you wait when making a decision, the greater the chance of an opportunity passing you by. For example, if I was going through the interview process and the interviewer asked me, can you share a specific instance where you took proactive steps to address a problem or seize an opportunity without being told to do so? my bias for action story would come up. It would come to mind and I might answer 
something like this. Um, okay, so upon acquiring a new business, I noticed that existing pricing structure did not align with the quality of services that was being offered. Instead of spending countless hours analyzing data and deliberating on the best course of action, I took immediate steps to adjust the pricing strategy. After conducting a brief yet focused market research and analyzing competitor pricing, I implemented a moderate increase in prices across various services. Concurrently, I revamped the branding and marketing materials to reflect its premium position and highlight the added value customers would receive. Despite initial concerns about potential pushback from existing guests, transparent communication about the reason behind the price adjustment, along with the assurance of continued high quality service, helped mitigate any negative reactions. This proactive approach to pricing not only allowed my business to better align with market standards, but also positioned it as a premium destination, attracting a discerning clientele willing to pay for the enhanced experience. As a result, my business saw an increase in revenue and profitability, solidifying its foothold and setting the stage for continued growth. That would be my response. <laughs> this example underscores the importance of bias for action in driving positive change and seizing opportunities for success without getting bogged down by excessive data analysis. You will want to have two such stories for each of the 16 principles. So 32 stories based on your personal experience, all of which are written down and you'll want to review them for a few days to make sure you are comfortable speaking about them. Remember, you can use the same story for different principles as long as it makes sense. Amazon will not ask you 32 questions, five to eight at most. So by preparing and reviewing these stories, you will ensure that you are well equipped to discuss how you applied each principle in real world scenarios. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to phase two. In phase two, you'll be invited to answer multiple choice questions regarding profit and loss statements. It's crucial to understand how to interpret a profit and loss statement and identify calculation errors. PL statements provide valuable insight into a company's financial performance over a specific period and are used by investors, creditors, and management to assess the company's profitability. You don't need to know how to create a PL statement per se, just make sure you understand the basics and can I a calculation error. So, following the completion of phase two, Amazon will put your patience to the test before you are called in for phase three. Depending on the DSP location you specified you wanted to operate from, you can anticipate receiving an email within six weeks to 12 months. And believe me, this is no exaggeration. One of my close friends waited an entire year before hearing back from Amazon after completing her phase two PNL test. If you perform well in both phase one and phase two, Amazon will reach out to you to schedule an in-person or virtual interview once a station becomes available. Consider this invitation as the beginning of phase three. Okay, so moving on to phase three. In the third and final phase, Amazon will invite you for a virtual or in-person interview. Phase three entails the interview process where you'll virtually or in person meet with two to four individuals from Amazon corporate. They'll dive into various aspects of your background and experiences through a series of questions. Your thorough preparation, including crafting your 32 stories, ensure you're well equipped to respond confidently to any inquiry. Additionally, you can tailor these stories to align seamlessly with your questions, demonstrating your suitability as an Amazon DSP. Following phase three, you and Amazon will mutually agree and confirm your location and where you want to operate your DSP. In my next video, I will talk about how to select the right DSP location and the questions you should ask should you pass phase one, two, and three. And on your site visit, some of the things that you would wanna make sure you're aware of so you're not selecting a bad DSP location. Some additional tips I'll leave you guys with are tip one. Watch my Amazon DSP videos before applying for a DSP. I have several of them. Make sure you are physically and mentally prepared to be all in. Amazon is looking for owner operators, meaning they expect for you to operate 
the business. Tip number three, have good credit. There is no workaround. You'll be leasing vans, having hundreds of cell phone lines, and creating different business accounts. So you'll need to have good business credit. And if you don't, work on building your credit and then apply. Tip number four, you'll need about $10,000 in cash. No, you are not giving Amazon $10,000 in cash. They just want to ensure you are liquid enough to start the business and support yourself and cover your first payroll, equipment, etc. Tip number five, last but not least, like and subscribe so I can create more amazing Amazon videos. I have operated multiple DSPs and I have helped dozens of people get their DSP business. The program is a game changer. So please help me spread the word to others who are interested. Until next time.